real voice to be neutral. I wanted the story to move in some ways like a script, to be driven by a character and dialogue, and for the authorial voice to essentially be invisible, for the writing to disappear, and if you forget you're reading a book. So if I had anything clever in the prose, I cut it. And that's not to say the writing is boring, but I wanted the writing to be unobtrusive and to get out of the way. A line of dialogue or a line of prose didn't move the story forward and reveal character, then I cut it. So yeah, the book was intentionally extremely tight. I'm glad you said that. You moved from point A to point B, and I really appreciated that because I don't have a lot of time, and I can't tell you how many times I end up skipping over some things that just aren't important, and I didn't have to do that with your book. But it's interesting what each person finds important. One of the early Amazon reviewers lambasted me for all the geographical stuff in Lost Hills, and yet... The vast majority of the Amazon reviewers and the media reviewers, and whether it's National Public Radio or the Los Angeles Times, they love all the geographical stuff. So you have to be true to your own artistic integrity and what you think is important. I do always think about Elmore Leonard's advice to cut the boring stuff people pass over anyway. I don't try to overindulge the things that interest me. It's a real danger in my other series, the Ian Ludlow spy series, where they're big international thrillers and I travel all over the world to visit locations in the books, as I did with the books I wrote with Janet. And there's a real tendency to want to show off, to want to <laughs> reveal details that prove, hey, I went there. I try to resist that, to just find the one interesting detail about a place that I picked up while I was there that will ground the reader in that location without me blathering on and on just to illustrate, yeah, I was there and to pay off all that research. We needed the details because we haven't been to, well, Mom, you've been to California. I've been to California, but, uh, but can't say I was in the Lost Hills area. Well, it's almost like describing a fictional place. Nobody's been here. I mean, Calabasas hmm. is a very small area, and Lost Hills is something Thing most people have never heard of, yet it encompasses places many people have heard of, like Malibu and Calabasas and the Santa Monica Mountains. And it also encompasses places we've seen without realizing we've seen it. A lot of TV shows are shot in the vicinity covered by the Lost Hills Station of Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, like the Paramount Ranch, where Westworld and Planet of the Apes and so many other movies and TV shows are shot. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. So there's a lot of places in the Lost Hills jurisdiction that are very familiar to to people. They just don't realize they've seen it. So now you mentioned that this is going to be part of a series. So what's next for Lee Goldberg? Professional male model. Oh, oh very no, I, good. <laughs> I'll be writing more Eve Ronan novels. My third Ian Ludlow novel, Fake Truth, comes out April 2nd, I think. And I also have a TV series on Hallmark called Mystery 101. Four movies have aired so far. The fifth movie will be coming soon and several more in 2020. I'm also working on a couple of other series that Hallmark produces. So you'll see a lot of me out there. Maybe too much. You may want to get a restraining order now. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely keep us posted of any new books coming out because we'll definitely promote them on the series. Once you are part of our show, we consider you kind of one of us. So maybe I do need to get a restraining order. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. you. laughs> it might be mutual. <laughs> Lee, why don't you give us your contact information, your website address, so our listeners can check out everything you're up to. I am so easy to find. You can find me at LeeGoldberg.com. You can find me at Lee Goldberg on Facebook. And you can find me at Lee Goldberg 007 on Instagram. And you can find me right now standing outside your door. Watch you. <laughs> okay. And call the cops. He gets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why the police are. <laughs> well, Lee, we thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. It's my pleasure. I'm going to jump right back in that jacuzzi now with the Kardashians. I'm getting a little cold. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lee. Lee. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I don't know about the book, but I want to join Lee Goldberg in his lovely weather out in California. That's for sure. <laughs> it's cold here. Damp and cold. Lost Hills was a great read. And like I said during the interview, it was a very short, as far as pages go, book. But he was right. It was tight. It was just the story, and it got right down to the action, and I loved it. Well, you know the thing, not to do with the book itself, but I watch a lot of true crime mysteries, forensic files, whodunits. Almost everyone in California 
talks about the Lost Hills. And I never even heard that before until I read this book. And all of a sudden, every time I'm watching something, <laughs> they'll go, to... the Lost Hills Department <laughs> took care. And I'm, oh, that's Lee Goldberg's <laughs> book. I like this book a lot. It was very, very suspenseful. The end really surprised me. It's one of those books, you know, especially if you're a fan of mystery, you always try to, as you go along, try to figure out how this is going to end up. And, and this one, you're not going to figure it out. You're not going to figure it out. My hat off to Lee. It was a great read. Well, I think Lee's experience, especially writing for the screen, whether it's TV or what have you, lends itself to his character development. I really enjoy the character development in this book. Eve was very well done. You could feel her discomfort. She doesn't know what she's doing. Everybody on the force thinks she was put here because she's a star. I still need to go Google this real crime that this is based on. <laughs> yes, I do. T- it has to be Googleable. Googleable. Um, it's a word. <laughs> it's a word. We just want to say that we've been doing this for almost two years now, and that was one of the most enjoyable interviews. And Lee was a joy, and he is welcome back anytime. Yes, he, he would is. like to join us. Yes. Yes. Even if we may have to get a restraining order against him. <laughs> Next, we have our up and coming books, and we have three this week. First is A Divided Loyalty by Charles Todd, number 22 in the Ian Rutledge series. Scotland Yard detective Ian Rutledge is assigned one of the most baffling investigations of his career, a cold murder case with an unidentified victim and a cold trail with few clues to follow. It is published by Harper Collins, and it came out February 4th. Next up, we have Crooked River by Lincoln Child and Douglas Preston. It is the 19th in the Agent Pendergast series. Racing to uncover the mystery of several light green shoe-clad severed feet found floating in the Atlantic, Agent Pendergast is faced with the most inexplicable challenge of his career in this installment of the number one New York Times bestselling series. And that is published by Grand Central Publications, coming out February 4th. And on February 18th, from acclaimed author of Under the Sky, comes an unforgettable, chilling novel about a young woman who recognizes the man who kidnaps her child, setting off a search for justice into danger. The Lucky Ones by Lori Rader Day is published by William Morrow Paperbacks. Next up, our trivia question. Last week's question was, which Agatha Christie mystery features Hercule Poirot? A. Evil Under the Sun. B. Body in the Library. C. At Bertram's Hotel. And D. Murder at the Vicarage. And the answer is A. Murder Under the Sun. This week's trivia question is... Philip Marlowe was the hero in whose detective novels? A. Walter Mosley B. Raymond Chandler C. Tom Clancy or D. F. Scott Fitzgerald Good luck! At the beginning of May is always the Malice Domestic Book Festival in Bethesda, Maryland, and every year they have a banquet for the Agatha Awards, and they just announced the nominees for the Agatha Awards. For Best Contemporary Novel, Fatal Cajun Festival by Ellen Byron, Crooked Lane Books, The Long Call by Ann Cleves, Minotaur, Fair Game by Annette Dashafi, Henry Press, The Missing Ones by Edwin Hill, Kensington, A Better Man by Louise Penny, Minotaur, and The Murder List by Hank Philippi Ryan, Forge. Best First Mystery Novel, A Dream of Death by Connie Berry, Crooked Lane Books, One Night Gone by Tara Laskowski, Braden House, A Division of Harlequin, Murder Once Removed by S.C. Perkins, Minotaur, When It's Time for Leaving by Anne 
Pompano, and Circle Publications, Staging for Murder by Grace Toppin, Henry Press. Best Historical Mystery, Love and Death Among the Cheetahs by Reese Bowen, Penguin Press, Murder Knocks Twice by Susanna Calkins, Minotaur, The Pearl Dagger by L. A. Chandler, Kensington, Charity's Burden, by Edith Maxwell, Midnight Inc., The Naming Game, by Gabriel Vajon, Winter Goose Publishing. Best Nonfiction, Frederick Denay, Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine, and The Art of the Detective Short Story, by Laird R. Blackwell, McFarlane. Blood Rattlesnake, Burma Adams, Tom White, and the 1933 Crime Spree that Terrified Los Angeles by Julia Bricklin, Lions Press. Furious Hours, Murder, Fraud, and the Last Trial of Harper Lee by Casey Sepp. The Mutual Admiration Society, How Dorothy L. Sayers and Her Oxford Circle Remade the World for Women by Mo Moulton, Basic Books. The Five. The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper by Hallie Rubenhold, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Best Children Young Adult Mystery, Kazoo Jones and the Denver Dog Nappers by Shauna Holyoke, Disney Hyperion. Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen McManus, Delacorte Press. The Last Crystal by Frances Schoonmaker, Optus Press. Top Marks for Murder, A Most Unladylike Mystery by Robin Stevens Puffin. Jade Sly, Artist and Spy by Sherry Winston. Little Brown Books for Young Readers. Best Short Story, Grist for the Mill by Kay George in A Murder of Crows, Dark House Books. Alex's Choice by Barb Goffman in Crime Travel, Wildside Press. The Blue Ribbon by Cynthia Kuhn in Malice Domestic 14, Mystery Most Edible, Wildside Press. The Last Word by Sean Riley Simmons, Malice Domestic 14, Mystery Most Edible, Wildside Press. And Better Days by Art Taylor in Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. And we wish everyone the best of luck. I have to say, there's quite a few of those we've already had on the show. So if you look back through our play history, you will see some of these names. Yes. That brings us to the end of our episode. Be sure and listen next week. Visit our website at it was a dark and stormy book club dot com. You can go back and listen to all our past episodes there. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can email us and don't forget to send in those short stories. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye. Bye.